Hello everybody, it's me, Man Alone. Now, if you're used to my videos starting off with me throwing a book on my play area and saying, hello, it's me, Man Alone, the visual aspect of that is missing for now. It's going to be here in a second, okay? You're going to see my play area, but I am just I just have the character sheet up for Stilton Tarwater, the dwarf baker, who is the main protagonist of um, the solo round robin that has been going on uh, over the last month, and I am going to close it up and bring it all together, but I wanted to explain my approach before I revealed my play area, so just deal with this little visual obfuscation for a moment here as I talk about it generally. First of all, thank you to everybody who tuned in to the episodes of the Solo RPG Round Robin. Um, we had great viewers. We got lots of new subscribers to lots of new channels. I'm hoping all of the people who participated in this continue making videos. And some of you who um, either were not able to or uh, were a little uh, hesitant to join in this time, uh, obviously this was such a success. We, we would love to do it again. I would love to see one of uh, you uh, lead this, lead the rallying call for it to organize it next time. Um, I'm more of a starter than an organizer, but uh, we, we pulled it through to the end and we got uh, 13 episodes so far. So I just want to name and I'm going to tag below as long as YouTube allows me to tag this many people. Uh, thank you, Solo Spelunking, uh, Dice Tales, Solo Promoter, Goober McSnorford, Grognard Solo Gaming, Caverna Dolekis, Greek Solo RPG, Grey Army Gaming, uh, The Accidental DM, Matt Jackson, and Games Gone South. We had such an amazing diversity of experience levels with solo gaming, with different systems that we use, with different approaches, but the one underlying requirement was that everybody um, did a live playthrough. Uh, and again, the purpose of this was to, so to show that you don't need a lot of setup to get started solo playing. And I, I just wanna give a shout out to uh, Games Gone South um, and Goober McSnorford, new entries on the scene. Um, and Games Gone South has actually never solo played before. So did his first solo playthrough on camera. <laughs> so definitely, uh, definite props to that. Please, uh, the playlist is linked below. If you haven't already, uh, you, sh you should watch all those episodes. There is um, around episode eight, Great Army Gaming does a good, well, I guess it's right after episode eight, a great summary of everything uh, thus far. So if you wanted to catch up from there, or if you wanted to just watch this video, I'll give a little bit of an overview first, but I would ask again that if you haven't already, please click that playlist below and give a subscribe to all of these um, wonderful solo players who are who were part of this. Thank you, thank you so much uh, to everyone involved. Okay, so we left off um, in a little bit of a I'm not going to call it a predicament, um, but there's a lot of moving pieces here, right? And so um, now that it's uh, my turn to sort of try to wrap this up and put a bow on it, my thought was to keep things as simple as possible. And the simplest thing is that, you know, protagonist and antagonist, uh, Leonidas and Stilton have been sort of on a trajectory crash course towards each other. And I'm like, okay, well, obviously it's gotta be like a one-on-one -on -one duel here. And all of the rest of the stuff is details. And I said, great, done, donezo, seal it, mail it in, send it to your mama, do whatever you need to do with it because this goose is cooked. But then I said two of the stupidest words that anyone can say. I said, but maybe. And as soon as I said, but maybe, it we're doomed. Because as soon as you say, but maybe, you open the door, especially when you're a solo role player, you open the door to, let's call it complexity, okay? Because I started to wonder, well, if we have this one-on-one -on -one fight with Leonidas and Stilton, what about everybody else who is involved in the scene? And so, in order to deal with that, I've decided we're going to actually do three things today. And let me just say off the top, 
all the things I wanted to show about solo RPG play that anyone can do it, that um, there's nothing, there's it's no sweat to get it started up, to choose a system. Uh, I think we have demonstrated all of that through this round robin. And the last thing I want to demonstrate is if you create the contest, you get to um, uh, have contest creator privileges. And that means that my video will not be limited to 15 minutes since I have to wrap up all these threads. But that doesn't mean that I intend to take forever. Um, but it just means that we're going to do three parts to this video. Okay, so part two is going to be the dual between Leonidas and Stilton. And that is going to, um, you know, that's that's uh, in a way for all the marbles, all right? And then part three is we're going to uh, close up the story. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna figure out how to bring it to something of an ending. But for part one, what we're going to do, and I just wanna say, that this does not count for my Mork Borg playthrough because uh, Desert Dweller is not going to be able to write a sixth comment. We are going to do a skirmish style Mork Borg Forbidden Psalm uh, miniatures battle here with all of the remaining pieces. So still, let me pull this out of the way. So Stilton and Leonidas, we have Leonidas here, and we have Stilton. They are going to have an, you know, Anakin, um, Obi-Wan fight, although I don't think one of them was the other one's teacher, nor do I have any topography, so there's no high ground. Uh, but they're going to have a nice duel. Maybe a modern-day equivalent would be Matt Damon and... Who's the guy who plays Kylo Ren? There's that movie where they dueled recently that everybody saw, but and then everyone was like, oh, that it was fine, B minus. Anyways, so we're gonna put them off to the side. They're going to duel. I'll use Dragon Bane rules for that. Um, I do have a sheet made up for Leonidas um, that we'll use, and we will just, uh, yeah, we'll do that mono e mono. But the first thing that we're going to do is have a skirmish battle with everybody else, okay? So we're going to use the Forbidden Psalm rules. So actually, boy, this is really growing. We're going to do four parts, all right? The first part is I'm going to do a brief overview of how to use Forbidden Psalm, which I think is a great intro to miniature play. Then we're going to do the skirmish battle. Then we're going to do the duel. Then we're going to play out the rest of the scenario. Um, so I will pause between those things just to reset the playing area and stuff like that, but I'm not going to pause in midst of any of those sections. Those sections will all be live, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to clear aside a few things here, and we're going to start with an overview of Forbidden Psalm. All right. So uh, Forbidden Psalm is a Morkborg compatible game. It can be used like in tandem with Morkborg. You could transfer your characters over, play in a lot of the same scenarios, but it is a miniature skirmish game. Um, I currently have uh, Forbidden Psalm End Times should be shipping shortly to the United States, which is sort of the quintessential version that includes these rules as well as like the zines that they have released. Um, you can, you know, it is not a Stockholm cartel game, but you could definitely see the Morkborg DNA in there. Uh, I think this is a great game if you're a little bit either intimidated by miniatures games or you're just not sure if you're interested. I think this is a great game to wet, wet your whistle, <laughs> wet your teeth with um, because it has a really simple setup and uh, the rules are fairly simple as well. Now, you do have to endure some of the Morkborg style like formatting here where you're like searching on a page and you can't quite find like what you're looking for. But honestly, it's not as bad in this. Um, so there is like a campaign mode. There is a solo version of this that involves uh, this mad wizard whose name is Vriprix. Vriprix. Um, and we will generally use uh, the rules as listed in here. I just made a few modifications just for um, just for 
you know, to simplify things a little bit, as I was originally trying to do and now have a huge skirmish battle happening. But um, just to give you the basics of this, you know, measurements in Forbidden Psalm are in inches, um, but we likely, I do have a ruler if we need it, but we likely won't need that because these squares are one inch by one inch. Now you're supposed to play by a two foot by two foot playing area. And obviously to keep things in frame, I'm just going to play here, which is probably like one foot by almost two feet. Um, and so what I did to accommodate that is I just slightly reduce the movement uh, of some of the characters. And I'll, I'll talk about some of the other alterations. But basically, um, this is a roll over 12 d20 dice system. So that means you roll a d20, you add the modifier, and if it's over 12, that's usually uh, the, the number to beat, then it is a success. If you roll a one, it's a fumble, a natural one. If you roll a natural 20, it's a crit, okay? And so in terms of modifiers, there's stats, feats, flaws, and weapons that will serve as modifiers to the dice roll. Every weapon has a uh, one of the stats that is tied to it that you test. And here's the real uh, wonderful thing if, if you're, you know, if you're, again, if you're not, if you haven't been able to like bring yourself to try skirmish games yet, I think this is where it really shines is to decide every character's stats. You either take this line of stats or this line and then just assign the numbers to one of them, right? So if you want your character to be a bit more of a specialist, they could have like plus three strength, plus one agility, negative three presence, zero toughness. You could uh, assign those four numbers to any one of those that you want. And if you want a more balanced character, you could take the line of like plus two, plus two, minus one, minus two, and assign those to whatever. And you do that with every character, everyone in your war band. And then there's a couple calculated stats. Your health is eight plus toughness. Your movement is five plus agility. And again, some of these stats can be negative. And so, you know, if your agility is minus three, then your movement is just two inches. And everyone has five equipment slots plus their strength. So again, if your strength is, um, you know, plus three, then you have five plus three, eight equipment slots. Most stuff just takes up one equipment slot with the exception of, I think, just heavy armor. I'm trying to see. Oh, and yeah. Yep. I think that's it. Um, and at the beginning of the game, after you draft up your warband and you give your five members of your warband attributes, one of which can be a caster, by the way, who could do spell casting, um, you then have like 50 gold. Each team has 50 gold to buy the equipment for your team. Again, you can spend all 50 gold and give somebody like a huge battle axe and then leave, you know, um, tweezers for everybody else. But you probably want to distribute that uh, across the uh as best you can across the five members of the war band um armor has just it's just damage reduction um so if you have heavy armor it's minus three to whatever the attack is okay and so again it's this d12 system and you can see here each weapon shows its modifier so just to run through it really quick with a short sword short sword is d6 damage oops yep d6 damage and you roll agility for it. So you'd look at your character's agility and say their agility is plus two. You would roll a d20 with that agility and it'd be 17 plus two, 19, which obviously is over 12. And so that would be a hit. And then you would just look at the short sword and what its damage is d6. You'd roll that to see the damage. You'd check the other character's armor if their armor was one, then it would be two minus one. They would take off one HP. Now, whenever there's a melee attack, the other person who is defending, they also get to attempt a melee attack because it's like you're one foot apart, right? But on their D12, they're going to have a minus three modifier since they didn't initiate the stat. So melee is a little bit risky. Uh, you obviously, the other person's at a disadvantage when they try to hit back, but anytime you engage in melee, there's a risk that they can hit back. Unfortunately, I mostly set up melee 
uh, players here, I might do a little bit of a switcheroo to give somebody a bow. Um, but there's a couple of different weapon modifiers that we're not going to get into other than maybe reach some one of the, I think, uh, Groove has reach with a spear and you could attack enemies that are two inches away. Uh, there's a cruel modifier on some of these weapons that you always deal at least one damage regardless of armor. There's dazed where you have to do presence tests. Okay. Now also, um, you select one of the models to be a caster and uh, recruiting a caster costs five gold. So to have a caster, you have to pay five of your gold and they get two random scrolls, one clean and one unclean. Clean scrolls are more like cleric like healing and buffs and defense um whereas unclean equals heathen magic is like attack or punish sort of spells um that can also hurt the caster but really on a fumble it is some serious shit that can go down if you fumble a spell you get like tragedy points and if you fumble uh, sorry, every time you, you every time you try to cast a spell, you have to do a DR12 check. You roll a D20, add presence. That's the stat that's going to relate to uh, spell casting. If you fail it, you however much you failed by, you like mark that as a tragedy. And when you fumble on a spell cast, you have to go to the calamity table and use those tragedies as a modifier. So the higher that you go, the higher you, you have of like a really bad thing happening. So for instance, if you just roll a one, blood spills from the caster's eyes and the caster is blinded. So that's actually pretty bad because that is like a one is sort of a fumble in this game. But Two is probably the weakest one. The caster begins to glow an eerie green color when attacked. The opponent gets a plus three to hit the caster. All the way up to he appears, devours the caster, and any other model in three inches, anyone devoured, dies. And then if you roll a 20, you have to roll twice and take both results. All right. So it's a little bit of danger in that. We'll, each, we'll have a caster on one, oh, each on one side. Um, you also get at the beginning of a campaign six omens, um, which are things that you can sort of induce after a roll to change the outcome or add something to the, the attack. Because we're not playing a full campaign, just one battle, I'll reserve the right to cast an omen if I feel like it would be good for the story. It's not really casting an omen, an omen just sort of happens. Um, in terms of how we're going to do initiative, I did do like a practice round just with myself and, um, I was rolling initiative each and every round and it got really, really confusing in terms of who has gone and who has not gone. So I rolled initiative in advance and I kind of like rolled, just set up the initiative so that I can go through that same initiative every round, unless something big changes. Obviously if someone dies, we can skip them. Um, or if someone, you know, gets some debilitating injury, we could modify that. But that will just make it a lot easier because uh, playing solo, it's just very hard. <laughs> it was very hard for me to keep track of, like, if uh, a person went or not. Um, so each one, each person, again, will have a movement of five plus their agility. If their agility is negative, they can only move like two inches. Um, if they are encounter something that they have to jump across, they can automatically jump across it as their only movement if it's less than three inches, which I believe everything is unless we went from this all the way to the other side. If you tried to jump to something longer than three inches, uh, you and you you have to do a, an agility test and if you get lower than 12, you f fail and you lose HP equal to how far you fall now we have lava pits here so it's not really how far you fall so i'm going to say that you will lose as much hp as you are under 12. so if you roll an eight you'll lose four hp i doubt we're going to have that because like i said there's not really a lot of things to jump over uh, but just to give you an idea of that uh, also if there was like different levels of terrain your movement on terrain is halved so if you have like a movement of four and the terrain is more than an inch, you have to measure it and then 
you get two upward movement inches as opposed to four flat movement. All right. So um, each round we determine initiative and we activate our models going back and forth between the teams. Now they'll be a little bit lopsided, so that will be, a, we'll have to kind of be flexible with that. But one thing that's a little different than other games, uh, Dragonbane, for instance, you can sort of move uh, and then attack, or you can um, attack and then move away, or you can move and then save your attack in uh, Forbidden Psalm. Once you do your action, which could be a ranged attack, a melee attack, using a piece of equipment or a feat, a scroll, I'll talk about feats and, and um, flaws in a, in a second, uh, pick something up from the ground, interact with a treasure, uh, make a second movement as an action, so like dash, once you do your action, your turn is over. So if, for instance, I fumble on a melee attack and Triunia drops his sword, he has to pick up that sword. And so on the next round, if the first thing he does is pick up that sword, he's done. That's his activation. It's over because he did his action. We do DR12 tests for anything that needs a test during combat. And uh, feats and flaws. Now, I did roll those up for my players, um, but did not do that for the enemies just because it was there's, there's quite a few of them, and I just didn't... Uh, it was going to get too complex already with the uh, having these for my own team members. But flaws are basically like what they sound like. You roll a d20 and whatever flaw you land on kind of gives your player a drawback. So, for instance, if you roll a six, you get greasy hands, suffer minus one to agility tests. I actually tried to pick these out along with the feats according to what I think the character would have. And if I there was nothing clear, then I just like randomly assigned them something. Feats, on the other hand, are kind of advantages, sort of, like cowardly. Uh, you get a minus one on all morale tests, but gain a plus one on agility. Um, meathead model is stronger than they are smart, plus two strength and minus one presence. And I believe, yes, uh, Triunia got meathead. Uh, Gruth got Cowardly, Malexia got Newbie, so that means they don't have a flaw, um, and Malexia's feat is an, uh, an improvised fighter, so she can just like pick up an improvised weapon from the battlefield at any time. Um, let's see, Gruth is allergic to metal, uh, Triunia is, has malnutrition, so minus one strength. And Malika, who is in the middle here on the altar, has weak hands, can only use one-handed weapons, and as a feat is a medic. And so with the medic feat, can make a presence test to heal one down model. Model is restored on one HP and returns to the fight. Okay, so I think this is probably the last thing I just got to go over. Uh, also, I made um, Malexia the spellcaster just to give her a healing spell. So I gave one clean scroll to this team, one unclean scroll. Goon number two has a lightning attack that they could both use once uh, per round, or I'm sorry, once per battle. Um, and the other thing is when you make, when you get hit with a critical hit uh, or you attack a downed opponent, you have to do a morale check. All right. And, uh, Let's, let's just talk about what a downed opponent is. So when you reduce someone's HP to zero or less, you flip their model and they are down. They can do no more actions. Uh, after combat, they will do like a death saving throw to see if they can uh, recover. Um, downed models must pass a death save at the end of the scenario to determine if they died during the session or managed to crawl their way off the field bloody and broken. And that's only a DR6 test uh, with toughness. So you just have to roll over six for that. On a fail, they're dead. On a pass, they are wounded and there's an injury table. We won't get to that um, because, you know, this is just one scenario that we're playing through. Um, but if an opponent is down, they're out of the fight. However... If you then go over to them and strike them while they're downed, essentially killing them, 
you also have to do a morale test because it's like, oh man, I just killed somebody, which I kind of like. Uh, it's gruesome and grim, but it's also very realistic. Like it's probably not, I don't have experience with this, thankfully, but it's probably not easy to like someone begging for their life and you, you know, hit, hit stab through their throat or whatever. Ooh, gives me shivers. Um, but yeah, so that is, uh, or when you get hit with a critical hit, you have to make a morale test. And you basically just do a DR-12 with presence. If you lose a morale test, uh, you do your movement towards the exit of the battlefield. And since we're underground, I made this door over here the exit. And so say that there's a movement of two, failed a morale test after I got critically hit. I'm going to move two. I redo the presence test next round. If I fail again, I move another two. And I keep going by movement towards the door until I'm out or I pass a presence test, then I stop and I can participate in the battle again the next round. So I hope that made sense. Um, I guess the last thing I want to say is more involved with how I set up the play area here. So um, I could probably just reset on camera. So first of all, I tried to get all my Mork Borgy dice out. You know, I love my Mork Borg D2 coin here. Um, I tried my best. I really um, found the things that I think I think this one is orange-ish. But anyways, uh, it didn't really work because for most of these, it was like pretty hard to see the results on them. So I'll just use the bigger dice. Um, I don't know why I said that. I guess I just wanted to say, hey, I tried. Um, oops, sorry. I just hit the mic. Um, we will probably use the fate mill as an oracle in the story section, or if anything comes up also, uh, in my, in my practice playthrough, I had times where I was like, does this enemy go after this person or somebody else? And I would use the, uh, oracle die, the fate mill die for that. But otherwise it's going to be a D 20 most of the time for tests. Um, and let me talk about how I set things up. So. At the end of the last session, we basically had this back area that was cut off from the, the uh, there was lava in the middle of the room and it was uh, obfuscating the two times in this video. I said obfuscating after not saying it in conversation for 12 years. Um, essentially, uh, Stilton knocked down a spider's web hoping that this giant spider would come down and immediately attack Leonidas and the goons. But unfortunately, the spider came after uh, Stilton instead. So Stilton went into this back room and shut the door. And the spider, not having opposable thumbs, I guess, uh, then turned uh, its attentions towards Leonidas and the goons. They ended up going in this back area as well. And so you pretty much had Leonidas and his goons in this back area, uh, with the spider on the other side of this door. So um, what the way I'm going to resolve that is I'm going to consider that spider a monster, okay? Uh, and not like a basketball player who's bragging like, I'm a monster in the paint. Uh, literally a forbidden saw monster. Monsters have special rules. They don't have teams, so basically, they, they have this level of prioritization of who they go after. Usually, it's like the, the model that's closest to them that is in their line of sight. And if there's no one in their line of sight, then they do the one closest to them. Um, and, it, you know, a model that's not the same of its, as itself, which means not another monster. Uh, if it goes, if it sees more than one model, it moves towards the closest model. On a tie, uh, dice roll determines which way it moves. Uh, if the monster makes it within one inch of the model, not of its same type, it immediately attacks uh, with close combat. And the monster had a 2d6 movement. Uh, again, because I have half a table, I'm making that 1d6, which is still like bananas. I mean, the most anyone else moves, I think, is four inches. And so this, this guy can move up to six inches. And his bite, their bite, I don't know uh, if the spider is you know, ma'am, um, uh, the Madam Spider's Bite is going to be uh, a 1D10, all right? So that's a big movement and a big bite. But they're currently, you know, going off of the, the sort of uh, reality of the previous playthrough, 
The idea was that this spider couldn't get through this door. So what I'm gonna do is I give this door 20 HP and I wrote up uh, some stats for the spider and the spider has a strength of plus three. And so I'm going to roll a D20 every round and add three for its strength. And so seven plus three, that would be a fail. All right, it's gotta be over 12. But if it was 10 plus three, that's over 12, it's a pass. I will then roll a D10 to see how much HP the spider takes off this door. So that would be five. And this door is gonna have 20 HP. And so we'll go through each round re-rolling that. And if the spider breaks through, then the spider will start to move around the battlefield and, uh, you know, attack anybody who uh, is in range. We'll go with the monster rules on that. Um, otherwise, I drew up Team Stilton, which is going to be Gruth, uh, Malexia, Triunia, Malika. Again, I did remove, uh, reduce everyone's movement because otherwise like people would just be like moving across the board really quickly. It wouldn't be very uh, fun. Uh, I gave them basic weapon loadouts. I, uh, based on their feats and flaws, I adjusted their stats as well as if they had um, any weapon modifiers. I just basically tried to use whatever the little standee had. So for Groot, I gave Groot a two-handed spear that has reach. Um, for Malexia, I have a short sword and also can do a heal for D6 and has heavy armor. Now, that's another thing. Spellcasters are not supposed to be able to cast spells with um, heavy armor on, but I'm making an exception here again because there's only one spell and uh, Malexia has an HP of seven and, so, and a pretty uh, low strength, and so I had to... Had to throw a bone there. Um, and then Triunia is going to have a short sword, a shield, medium armor, and a helm, uh, as well as a torch, which can be used as a melee weapon. Uh, and so that is for, let me just put that up here. That's for Team Stilton. I'm just trying to keep that in my line of sight, which is not working. Well, we'll get that. Um, and then also for the baddies, team baddies, we have the two goons and the three guardians. Now, remember, there's these two goons. Oh, Lord. There's these two goons that came with Leonidas. And Leonidas, remember, is off dueling Stilton, which we'll see after this. So we have the two goons left. And these guardians are pretty much only interested in Malika here as a sacrifice to resurrect this god encased in amber. And uh, just, uh, I think for space purposes, I have like a smaller, yeah, I'm gonna just replace this uh, with a smaller model or a cardboard thing here. But they're trying, if you recall, or you did watch, they're trying to resurrect uh, this ancient god because Leonidas is dying and, and the resurrection of this ancient god could mean eternal life it could mean i don't know leonidas becomes that god we'll try to figure that out um but either way they're trying to resurrect um that and so the guardians are pretty much just interested in that so rather than having it a five on three this is how i set this up and uh hope hope everyone approves um, so basically the deployment zone for our folks is going to be these first two squares here. This is team Stilton and we will deploy them within that two square. This is, think of it as like an end zone if you're familiar with American football. And then we'll put the two, uh, baddies, the two goons over here. The three guardians are going to be around, uh, Malika who is on this altar right now. And again, they are more interested in just like resurrecting this god which they need a champion and a sacrifice and so they're not going to participate in the fight other than i drew these little dotted lines if somebody comes in or around these dotted lines they can basically attack them and they can engage in melee combat with them 
Um, and they have some pretty tough stats, I should say. They're pretty tough. Uh, in the playthrough, I was like, dang, this is this is kind of hard. Uh, and then remember, this statue is just a stand-in. The other statue is here. And so you can only come in from one of these three ways. The goons might get into it with them too if they want to pass through. I'll use the fate mill to, to figure that out. Um, but essentially, if, if it goes this way... Um, there is, we could just have, you know, maybe everyone go up this way and completely ignore them and fight the goons and, um, and maybe something else can happen with the guardians, maybe some negotiation. I don't know, but it's, it's plausible that the whole fight can avoid them. But if somebody does break through the guardians and downs one of them to get to Malika, Malika will be, uh, brought back on her feet and will be able to start participating the next round. Now, Malika has some, some rough stats, <laughs> a movement of two, uh, HP of five, uh, but has a medic um, feat, which will allow her to resurrect anyone who's down. But also I put um, a bunch of like equipment on her bandages and potions. So as like a little bit of an incentive to, try to get to uh, Malika. It's kind of almost like getting to a treasure or something like that. Um, I am also going to say that this is an improvised weapon. Uh, and these are just like obstacles. Um, we'll just put one improvised weapon down that anyone can use. But if <clears throat> Malexia wants to use an improvised weapon, that's just an action. So she can fashion it and then use it next round. Um, and if Malexia is... Oh, man, this is going to be a problem the whole time because it's kind of confusing. If Malika is revived, then the other two guardians will pursue um, her to try and get that sacrifice back on the altar. Okay. As long as they're able to, they might be engaged in another fight. So that's basically how this is going to go. Um, each round, I will roll at the beginning for the spider. That's how we'll kick off the game to see if they attack the door. And then we'll go, Groot is going to be first and will be deployed first. And then it's going to be Goon 1. And is Goon 1... Let's see. Goon 1 is... Oh, it has a staff. So this is Goon 1, who has the lightning and the staff. So then we'll uh, deploy Goon 1. And then we'll go to Malexia, who's here. Remember, Malexia is sort of the intrepid youth uh, daughter of Broderick, who is tagging along and apparently is a little bit of a healer. Now we'll deploy Goon 2. I'm going to go up top here. Um, just so we know, Goon 1 has a... Movement of four, and then is plus two agility, plus two presence, minus one strength, minus two toughness, with an HP of six. And Goon two is minus one agility, minus two presence, but plus two strength and toughness, and has an HP of 10. They both have an armor of one, which means that any attack on them that is successful gets reduced by one, unless it's by something that ignores armor. Um, and Goon one has a movement of four. So this is a big, big mover and shaker. Um, all right, so that was Goon 2, and next is Triunia, all right, and then next would be Guardian 1, um, obviously they're already deployed, and that's Eye Patch. so this is Guardian 1, and they each have their own kind of loadout, and then Guardian 2 is the one with the mace, it's like kind of a double-sided mace, and then Guardian 3 has like a dagger and a scythe, um, and... Guardian 1 is in the uh, in basically the initiative order. And then if Malika is up, she will go next. And then Guardians 2 and 3 will close out the round. And then we'll go back to the spider. So if that sounds good to everybody, um, and I'll know later because my viewership will drop by 800% if everyone's not okay with that at this very moment. Uh, I'm going to pour myself a tall glass of water. And by water, I mean strawberry milk. No, I can't. I threw up last time I had strawberry milk. Shit, I just said that on mic. Okay, I'll be back. I'm going to have a liquid. Okay. Let us begin. So, our um, 
brothers, Triunia and Gruth, were trying to make their way out of the dungeon along with Malexia, but realizing now um, that Malika is there and they need to uh, rescue her. They can't leave the herbalist there. Uh, they they see the the game here is clear. This is basically volleyball or not volleyball dodgeball in gym class right but instead of rushing towards the middle to get a ball you're rushing towards the middle to get a person that you're saving from guardian cultists um but from behind this door here we have somebody who is very angry and has a plus three strength and so for the inaugural dice roll um for this game, we are going to have um, famous uh, uh, NPR This American Life host Ira Glass uh, roll the dice for us. Here you go, Ira. Hello, everyone. So today I'm rolling a dice. But what else can we roll? Lots of things. You can be on a roll. You can eat a bread roll. You can be on the bank roll. You can roll over. You can have a rollover IRA. Today we're talking to a couple of people who rolled in different ways. Act one, somebody who rolled dice. Okay, Ira, just can you just roll the die? Absolutely. Uh, may the best goons win. Thank you, Ira. Go ahead. All right. So five plus three is not going to do it for the spider. <laughs> And we have a fumble already, but it's of the pencil. So so we'll go at least this round without the spider breaking through. Next, we have Gruth up right here. Gruth is going to do a movement of two. One, two. Uh, we go across the board now to Goon 1. Goon 1 has a big movement to make here. <laughs> that sounded like a bowel movement. Uh, with feet. One, two, three, four. And we go back to the other side for Malexia. One, two. How many movements? Malexia has three. Okay, so we'll go... Mm, Two, okay, we'll go one, two, three. Um, back to the other side, Goon two, movement of two. And finally, uh, we are going to have Triunia. I think Triunia has a pretty low movement of three. Oh, that's not too bad. One, two, three. Just outside of the lava there. Uh, Guardian 1 is not going to go, nor is Malika Guardian 2 or 3. All right, next round. Uh, once again, we're going to roll to see if the spider breaks through. 10 plus 3, that is a success. And now we're going to roll a d10 to see how much damage is done to the door. Please roll a 1. Yes! A 1. So the door is down to 19. Um, I'm just keeping my little scorecard here. And, you know, I could present this on the screen, but I know you all love low technology, non-video editing, and I don't want to disappoint. Okay, uh, next we have Gruth. You know what? I'm just going to write the movements of everybody on here so that I don't have to keep doing that. So Gruth is going to be a movement of four. And I think Gruth is going to go one, two, three, four. And Goon 1, I think, has 4 as well. Yep. And so Goon 1 is going 1, 2, 3, 4. And Malexia has um, a movement of 3. And so 1, 2, 3. And we'll say that Malexia is going to pick up that improvised weapon. And we'll use our Dragon Bane improvised weapons here to do a little bit of a shuff shuff. Not too much because I have a sprained wrist. But we're going to get a boulder. 
Make an acrobatics roll to jump on the boulder and throw yourself at an enemy within two meters. <laughs> That's interesting. The attack flicks, inflicts 2d6 damage plus damage bonus and cannot be dodged or parried. If it succeeds, both you and the enemy drop to the ground. If your roll fails, only you fall over and suffer d6 damage. I actually love that. And I'm going to do that right now. Of course, instead of an acrobatics check, we're going to do agility. Let's see what does Malexia have for agility plus two. So Malexia, and make an acrobatics check. Yeah, so we're going to try to hit this guardian hard. Come on, give me at least a 10. Come on, come on. Yes, okay, 14. And this is going to hit for 2d6 damage. So we'll roll this twice. Three. <laughs> One, four. Okay, not terrible. Um, I don't believe the guards have any... No. So this guard... And we're both fall. We're not actually going to fall right now because that would indicate that we're downed. But this guard uh, is going to go from a 9 HP to 5 HP. So a nice explosive start for Malexia here. Uh, we're going to bring it across the table, uh, Bob, for uh, goon number two, who has a movement of two. Uh, pretty one, two, so threading the needle there. Um, eh, hell, we'll give a, um, why don't we, why don't we make this a improvised weapon? Just to keep things fair, exciting. And then, you know, when everything falls apart, I'll be like, why did I do that? Cause I can't help myself. Okay. Dropped a few cards and we're going to do not the same one, a low branch. Uh, we're not outside, so let's try a different one. A patch of dirt. Throw dirt in the eyes of an enemy within 10 meters. So we'll say 10 inches. The enemy suffers D6 damage. Armor has no effect and gets a bane on all actions for the rest of combat. The, co the attack could be dodged but not parried. So I think what we'll do is we'll roll an agility check to see if um, Goon 2 here can even throw it. Uh, does Goon 2 throw it at the Guardian, or does it attempt to throw it... Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. Does he attempt to throw it at uh, Groot? And if not, it'll be at the Guardian here. So if it's yes, yes, but uh, some of it hits his friend Goon 2 here, I think is the yes but on that. Uh, or maybe if it fails, if it fails, then um, it will hit Goon 2. So we'll do an agility, but I'm also going to do a presence test with, um, let's see, Groot to see if Groot is able to dodge out of the way. And Groot has a presence of zero <laughs> and Goon has a presence of plus two. So let's see if this hits. Eight plus two, not successful. And so is going to throw that at the eyes of a friend. And it's going, of course, uh, it, it, I think it said armor has no effect. Uh, the tape will show, your honor. Um, I, don't, I don't know how much I'm going to. I love that patch of dirt. Um, Armor has no effect. So that means that Goon 1 goes down to, f darn, 5 HP. Okay, nice. We're getting some good action here. This is a lot better than when in my practice session. Let me tell you that. I was stinking it up. I got very worried. Um, all right, so now we go back to Triunia. Triunia. You've got to see him. All right, movement of three. We'll go one, two, three. Um, and guardian one, uh, just so that we have it down, is a movement of two, but not moving because no one's in the zone yet. Malika is not moving, but Malika has a movement of two. And then guardians two and three have three and four. Dang. Okay, so we're back up to the spider. Uh, we're going to do a plus three to see if it gets over 12. Oh, shh, Nikes. All right, so that's got to be... 
It's got to be. That's a crit. So it's 10. It's 10 damage to the door. So we're down to nine. Crap. All right, we got to move. <laughs> we got to get a move on here. All right, so the door has nine HP left. The spider is banging on it. Uh, next, we're going to bring it around to Groot, who I believe is ready and in range here and is going to engage in uh, the fiercest and most deadly of melee combat. So... Uh, Groot has a spear, which actually goes two inches, and, you know, actually, I think if you use the spear, then they don't get to hit back, but since I already made the move, I'll keep it there. Um, and so for spear, we test agility, which Groot has a plus four, um, and because the cowardly feat uh, morale presence test minus one on morale but uh, agility plus one so let's see if we can connect with this spear 14 2 we do connect and the spear is going to be 1d6 oh baby so we got a six on guardian two and that is going to bring guardian two down to four hp that is wonderful I was seriously scared before this video. I was like, this is going to suck because it was very boring. And it also took forever because I just was not hitting anything. And so I played another game and it got a little better. And I was like, OK, I think I just kind of suck. Um, OK, guard two has a Morningstar mace. And so we're going to use strength, which is plus two. 11 plus two, that definitely connected. And that is a 1d8. Oof, this could be a devastating attack. Um... However, does Groot have any armor? No, of course not. So hopefully there's no crit here because then we're going to have to do a morale test. Oh, God. Come on. What are you? Ow! <laughs> a six. I'm so sorry about that. I bet that was horrible to look at and even worse to listen to. So Groot uh, got snapped for six, which brings Groot's HP down to three. Oh, Lord. Okay, Groot. Um, we're going to go to Goon 1. Uh, does Goon 1 pursue Triunia? And if not, we'll go after this uh, guard. Yes, but... Um, does go after Triunia? Yes, he does go after Triunia, but he's going to do an attack on the guard first. So we'll do one, two. And uh, once again, Goon one is going to test strength. So that is, oh yeah, this is a minus one and it's only a 1d4 if it hits. So yeah, no, that's not going to be a hit, but the guard, the guardian is going to hit back and that is guard three who has a, it's going to roll on agility for their scythe at a plus two, 18 plus two, 20, not a natural 20. So it's not a crit, but uh, we will do a one D six. Yes. And so goon one is D E D dead even with one armor they had five hp left well they're downed so they're downed like that um so goon one is at zero all right and uh so i'm just gonna cross goon one out for now um malexia let's see what we can do here okay so malexia is matched up here with the uh guard one um, and so Malexia no longer is going to be jumping off any rocks. It's going to do a straight up attack, which is modified by, uh, her agility, which is plus two. And if she hits that with her, uh, short sword, I should have done a staff for that, but that's okay. Malexia will hit a plus two. It's a one D six and we have a plus two on a roll 16 two. We definitely hit. 
And we're going to hit for four. Uh, and guard has no armor. Uh, patches. And that would be guard one. Um, guard one had... Uh, I think I accidentally uh, erased. Goon one has zero. Guard one had a nine to start. And then what did we just roll a two or a one? I think we rolled a two because I think that guard had seven left. Uh, so seven minus four, this guard now has three. And let's see if there's any retaliation uh, with patch is going to be a plus two, a plus three to the DR 12, 12 plus three hits. And the guard is going to hit for 1D four. So ugh, that's a four, but Malexia has heavy armor. And so Malexia is only going to lose one, which is great. Uh, so down to six, not so bad. And you could see how easily I was like losing track of everybody. Okay, um, Goon two is still kicking. Um, and so we're going to go one, two. And I think that's... Um, does Goon 2 go after the Guardian? No. And doesn't care. Um, not going to go after the Guardian. And I'm just going to pause a second to see if there is an option for me to, like, for Goon 2 to try and revive Goon 1. Don't, don't ask me why I'm going out of my way to figure that out. Nope. Uh, they just have to wait to the end of battle. But I did remember one thing that I almost forgot is that we forgot to roll for Spidey, I think. Well, we're going to roll again because I'm a glutton for punishment. <sighs> 16, so they hit, and it's going to be a 1d10. The door has 9 HP, and we'll roll a 3. So the door is down to 6. All right. Is everyone on the edge of their seat yet? Um, okay, so Malexia swung. Goon 2 made their move. They did not go towards the guard, so I do think that they're just going to um, try to make their way across to get... Um, to try and get the best of uh, Triunia, who is up next and has a movement of three. And I think Triunia is going to. I think Triunia is going to move here because I think wants to stay away from that fella over there. And Triunia is going to. I love that name, Triunia. Um, we're doing agility with a short sword, and agility is a plus two. 10 plus two is 12. So that is a hit. And with the short sword, that is 1d6. And we're going to hit for a three. And that is not the end of the story for guard two. Because guard two is down to one HP. All right. Hanging on. Hanging on. And guard one is going to swing back. I'm sorry. Guard two is going to swing back uh, with a strength modifier plus two. 14 plus two does hit. Uh, you know what I also have been forgetting to do is that the person who is hitting back has a minus three. So I think that's only affected me negatively so far. So I'm not going to make any corrections on that. Um, so actually 14 minus three is, would be 11, but because it was 14 minus three, uh, plus two. Yeah. So that's still 13. Um, and they're going to hit with, oh man, a 1d8. That sucks because it's a morning star. Um, there's another thing though, is like when somebody is hit and they have an ally next to them that negates that minus three, but that's only if you're like defending the hit. If you're the one that did not initiate the hit, you'd lose that. But right now, Triunia initiated the hit. And so I think what we're actually going to do 
is we're going to use triune. Well, I want to make sure I do this before the roll, but I think we're going to use the shield to negate this. Um, if I remember how shields work correctly. So, uh, shield can be destroyed to ignore one attack after all rolls. Okay. So I think we'll try that. Um, we'll just see what it would have been five. Good. So my shield is gone. Um, Triunia's shield is gone, but no HP lost. No harm, no foul. Uh, I guess that would have been a three because Triunia has two defense. All right. And Guardian 1 is, I would say, activated and in combat because Malexia is right here. And so Guardian 1 is going to have a swing with a club, which uses a strength modifier of plus 3. 7 plus 3 is 10. No dice. Uh, Malexia will hit back with a minus 3 modifier. But... Uh, she is a plus two agility, minus three, so it's just minus one. Eight plus three, 11, minus one, 10. So no hits there. It's just two people swinging clubs at each other and then being like, nice show there. Good chop. Um, all right. Then let's see. You know what? That was goon two. Huh? That's fine. So goon two got a, a movement early. Damn. Yeah, just imagine before I was rolling initiative each round. It was like unreal. Uh, and then so Guardian 1 went. Then Malika is still on the altar days. Then Guardians 2 and 3. Let's see. So Guardian 2 is definitely going to attack. Does Guardian 2... <clears throat> we'll just say that uh, evens are... Um, evens, they're going to attack Groot. Odds is Triunia. Evens Groth. Uh that sucks because I think Groth, yeah, Groth has three HP. But because Groth is next to an ally, we do not have to roll at minus three. Let's see if <clears throat> I don't even think Groth. Groth has no armor. Yeah, this could put Groth uh this can really hurt Groth, but we'll even see if this connects. So we're rolling the Morning Star with plus two strength. Great. Plus two, ten doesn't hit, but Groot gets to hit back um, without a minus three with an agility of plus four. Come on, Groot. Come on, baby. Damn, that sucked. Um, I'm going to use an omen because this is how much I believe in Groot. You're about to see magic happen live, folks. I'm going to use my one omen, and you're about to see when you believe in your characters, you're about to see what's going to happen amazing things happen so re-roll any dice your or someone else's uh i'm not going to automatically pass a test that's too easy i'm going to leave it up to fate and you're going to see we're going to re-roll that die and you're going to see when you believe in fate i'm not even going to look at it i'm not even going to look i'm looking the other way okay here we go i need to roll wait a minute i need to roll a at least an eight. Pfft, child's play. Boom. Nine. <laughs> yes. All right. So thank you, Omens. Thank you, Omens. Thank you. Uh, Groot is going to whack a mole for 1d6. Five. And my little friend, Guard 2, is downed which means that the next person can move in on this side. Um, so Guardian 2 is down. Um, and Guardian 3, is Guardian 3? Yeah, I guess Guardian 3 is going to attack here. But um, next person that uh, next time, one, well, anyone can go this way, but to... To move here would be an attack would initiate an attack of opportunity. So um, I think that Guardian Three is going to try to attack Goon One. Not really understanding. Don't care whose sides on what. And Guardian Three with the scythe is going to have an agility modifier plus two. Ooh, a crit. 
So they are definitely going to miss, and they're also dropped their weapon. And we're also going to give um, goon number two here a uh, not a minus three in their response. All right, we're going to see what happens if we just roll straight up. Strength modifier plus two. 10 plus 2, 12. They do hit. And then we're going to roll a 1d6. And they roll a 2. And so that would be Guardian 3 is down to 4. All right. So Spider rolls plus 3. 9 plus 3, 12. Man, this could screw everything up. Okay. Well, we just got to go with it. Uh, the door currently has 6 HP left. Three. Yes. All right. So the door is down to three HP, and I'm going to go over there and give the door a potion. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Groove is going to move in, and the action, I guess, will be to uh, kind of, I guess, revive um, uh, Malika here, which will be next turn. And then we're going to go to Malexia, who is going to attack patches O'Hanrahan here and that's with a strength mod of plus three come on big hit 13 3 16 that will def hit and um we're going to well actually that was uh plus two sorry I was looking at the wrong sheet but still um 13 plus two and that will hit for 1d6 with the short sword five that is guardian number one, Patches, and that guardian is downed. So this is great. I'm so excited. This I'm so happy this is working out for my characters because uh, I was like, you know, I'm trying to keep my head clear. I'm not trying to think about like the story that happens at the end of this, but I was like, my God, if they all die. Um, okay, so we got those guys down. That's Guardian 3. Um, Malexia went. Uh, Goon 2 is still going here. Um, and Goon 2 is just going to keep moving. I would say just kind of knock. I'm just going to put the down pieces over here just so that because we're not going to be resurrected. Um, oh, hmm. Well, this puts goon. This puts goon two in range of Malika. Well, I guess that if right now Gruth is on top, kind of protecting Malika, I guess we'll do a um, we'll do a melee attack on Gruth. Yeah, I think this is the fair thing to do. So we'll do for strength plus two. 14 plus two, 16. And oh, dang. <sighs> Groot has only three HP left. Well, this might be his heroic moment. Okay, Groot is down. Covering the body of Malika. And. Um, dang. Okay. Triunia is like. No. And is going to hurry over. And I know that Triunia has a bandage. And a torch. But I don't think either of those. Are going to do a damn thing. Um, I think it's just. I mean, we'll see. We'll do a death save at the end of the battle to see what happened, but I don't think that those can resurrect anybody. I mean, that would be a hell of a strong potion, don't you think? Why can I not find this page? Is it because I'm wearing a big thing on my hand here? Come on. Okay. Uh, bandages used to stop bleeding. Nope. Potion heals D6. Toughness test or become dazed. No, nothing. So I guess that Triunia is... Uh, has a movement of three, and I don't know. One, two, 
three. We don't want to put him in harm's way. Darn, I feel really bad. Um, okay, the show must go on. So, uh, Guardian 1 is gone, right? Yeah. Guardian 1 is down. Uh, Malika will go next turn. Guardian 3 is going to attack Goon 2. 7 plus... Two. doesn't do it and then goon two is going to do strength modifier plus two minus three so minus one 16 minus 115 oh this guy's on a rampage so he's gonna hit and goon two has a 1d6 five and so that's guard what well, that's guard three and guard three is down Okay, guard three is down. Wow. Okay. So the guards are down. And so basically, it just turns out that this goon two is a real goon. And now we have the spider. Oh, God, please. So the spider is going to be a plus two. Or sorry, a plus three. The door has no... HP left or three HP and I have to roll a 1d10 <sighs> yes <laughs> so close the door is down to one awesome and um, we're going to go to Groot who is downed right now and I think that brings us to Malexia, and Malexia has this heal spell, but it's not a revive spell. However, I'm just looking at everyone's health here, and Malexia's uh, starting health was only seven, so that doesn't do much. I can't heal the door, unfortunately. Malika, Gruth, Triunia, seven... Yeah, I guess no good use of that heal spell right now. Uh, but we can make good use of Malexia's movement. And I would say that Malexia is going to um, one, two, three. And I think I think that's... I think we'll double movement. I think Malexia is going to try and flank as the move this round. Try and backstab behind. Um, and then we have uh, Goon 2 is going to make a move again. And I guess... Uh, does Goon 2 go after Malexia? No, but... Well, I don't know the no but here, so not after Malexia, um, but does not, he has a movement of two, is not going towards Malexia, so I don't know, the, I can't figure out a but right now, but I'm, I'm too, I'm too, I'm experiencing too much stress here to figure out the but, I'll figure out the but in a second, I think that it's going to swing on Triunia here. And so Triunia has, um, sorry, I, I know that I'm, it's probably annoying for me to remind myself of this every time, but managing like nine characters is kind of tough. So strength of plus two, we'll get a plus two on the roll. Five, thank goodness. Um, and Triunia is going to hit back. Now Triunia has a minus three, but is going to do an agility test, which is a plus two. So only minus one. A fumble. No. Hmm. Okay, so Triunia dropped their short sword. Okay, that's fine. And so, um, that's fine. We still have a torch. Triunia still has a torch, but has to roll strength on that as a modifier, which strength is 
uh, well, plus four. That's actually nice. That's a nice uh, shot, but we could do that next time. Uh, now Malika is up, and Malika is uh, has this medic training. And so what's nice here, let me just get a little standy, is that um, Malika is going to, you know, is back at it and now is going to be able to attempt this medic roll on um, Groove. And the medic roll, should have made this video two parts, I don't care. It's an experience, right? Um, the medic is a feat, right? Yep. Uh, can make a presence test to heal one down model. Model is restored on one HP and returns to the fight. So that's what we'll do. We'll do a presence test. And Malika has a presence of plus three. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Uh, 20. And so resurrected with one HP growth back in the game. Um, excellent news. And so Groot will be back up next time around and our spider rolls again with a plus three. Nine plus three is 12. It doesn't even matter. I, it should have been a one. It doesn't matter because no matter what the door is busting down. Okay. A five. Uh, so the door is busted. And that means that the next round, the spider is going to move 1d6 according to monster directions. Um, and so let's see if we could finish things off before then. So Malexia is going to be um, actually, I'll tell you what. What we're going to, yeah. Um, Malexia is going to move one, two, three, four, and is going to attack Goon two. And Malexia rolls with agility plus two, 16, nice. And a 1d6 with a short sword, three. And Goon two is has armor of one, and so Goon 2 has at eight. Man, this is like, guys, like indestructible. Okay, now we're going to go to Goon 2. Well, I guess Goon 2 gets to fight back here. And Goon 2 has a plus two, but a minus three, so minus one. Yep, no, no re-attack, but we'll try to attack again to um, Alexia. Two, nope, isn't gonna do it. Alexia will hit back with a minus three plus two, so minus one. 13 minus one, 12, very good, we got it. And Alexia is gonna hit him for three, and that's bring Goon two down to five. All right, now, um, what I'm going to try to do here, we have Triunia, and I think Triunia is going to do a strength test, and I'm going to try and push dude down to the ground. All right. So 17 or 10, either way, it's a, it's a hit. And so um, we will push... This guy, ooh, down to the ground, and we'll go, Malika is going to, what's Malika's movement is two, go one, two, um, and then back to the spider, and the spider is, if this worked out correctly, hopefully uh check to see that if the monster model can see any other model that is not the same type of it monsters can attack other monsters if it cannot most monsters unless specified remain still and do not activate if a monster can see another model that is not the same as itself it moves 2d6 which we're going to do 1d6 uh okay so this monster is going to move 
toward <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and remember, he's not downed. He was just like kind of pushed to the ground. So not quite touching yet. All right. Um, so the spider moved. Now Groot is going to move. It's like, come on, we got to get out, get out. One, two, three, four. And uh, this could actually, this guy's like armor and HP could finally be used to our advantage here. Hopefully the spider just tears them apart. Um, all right. So that's Groot. And then Goon One's gone. And then Malexia has a movement of three and we'll go one two three now there is an attack of opportunity here i'm going to pause one second just to look that up well oddly i cannot find anything on attacks of opportunity even though it mentions it that is sort of a, an occupational hazard of any morkborg adjacent material you never know if it's like tucked on the bottom left of some page and glowing uh font that you can only read in the dark but i suppose we'll just make an agility test here with malexia who has a plus two agility 14 two so malexia is able to move two three four um and goon two i suppose is sees this monster and is probably going to move um does the goon fight back against the monster. No. And he's getting the hell out of there as fast as he can. So uh, can't move across. I haven't really decided where that is, but we'll just say one, two. All right. Um, technically, yes, that is the monster is still closest. All right. And so Triunia now is going to hightail it out. And Triunia has a movement of three. And actually, um, again, if it's less than three inches, we can leap. And so Triunia's move is going to be that for this round. And then Malika has a movement of two as well. One, two. And back around to the spider. The spider is going to roll, move 1d6. <laughs> One, lucky ass. All right, and then we're going to go to Groot, who has a movement of four. Hey, hey. Oh, crap. I just moved... I just moved Groot instead of Triunia. So let's see here. Um, so Triunia... Groot has... Uh, no, 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 that was right. Groot has a movement of four. Triunia is right here, has a movement of three. One, two, three. And um, back around to Malika. One, two. Um, spider. Oops. Yeah, five. Okay. Five. And then the spider has a strength of three and a bite of 1d10. So plus three here no uh and i guess uh this dude gets to hit back with a minus three goon two is like got a hand it it's an all-star so strength test plus two minus three so minus one 13 minus one 12 hits and goon two is gonna hit for 1d6 on the spider <laughs> it's for a six wow and so the spider has uh 10 hp so the spider is down to four Man, if this guy kills a spider, I might just, like, try to hire this guy. Like, whatever he's paying you, I'll pay you more. So, spider's down to four. Um, then we'll go Groot is one, two, three. And Groot is out of the battlefield. All right. And next we have Malexia, who has a movement of three. One, two, three. And then we have Goon 2 is going to move, but has to do uh, an opportunity, attack of opportunity. We're going to do agility for that. And agility is minus 1. 18 minus 1, 17. So that's a pass. Uh, so 1, 2. No attack of opportunity there. Uh, Triunia is going to have a movement of 3. 1, 2, 3. Uh, Malika, 1, 2. And back to the spider, who's still hot hot on the trail of Goon 2 here. Oh, my God. 
one. So it does not catch up with Goon uh, two. And Malexia now is going to go um, one, two, three. And Malexia is, uh, is off to safety. Goon two is going to move two. Um, and I'll say that Goon two pulls up an improvised weapon here. Cause why not? We're already an hour and a half into the video. So let's just see. Goon two. Let's get one in a cave. First one in a cave forest cave. Bats make a bushcraft roll to agitate the bats and make them attack an enemy within 10 meters. So obviously I don't have bushcraft. We'll do presence. Um, yeah, I guess we'll do presence. Uh, what is Goon 2's presence? Minus 2. 17 minus 2. It hits. So now the bats, I'm not going to look up bat stats in Dragonbane, um, but it says the bats keep attacking the enemy for D3 rounds. So instead of that, why don't we say that um, there, let's see, how many bats are there? Uh, most possible is three. So divide by, or, you know, three. Okay, so two bats. And so we'll just say each of them are 1d3 or 1d6. And so he's launching that here. Okay, the spider is downed. <sighs> Shit. All right, so Triunia has a movement of three. Does Triunia try to attack the goon or does Triunia keep running? Triunia, yes. So Triunia is going to attack. I know probably don't think this is a great idea. Um, and Triunia has a roll of uh, only a torch. And so roll strength is plus four. Great, so we hit that, and then we're gonna hit a 1d4 to see how much we take off this guy. And that is a one, which is completely negated by that armor. Um, and I would say that Malika, now seeing that he is in trouble, is... Does Malika help Triunia? Yes, and, and, yes, she does, and so do the other two. They're not going to leave anyone behind. So Malika is going to move in and is going to roll with a strength modifier, which is zero, and so seven, no go. Um, he will hit back, but with a minus three. Or minus one, I think it comes out to. Six, so no hit there. Um, spider is down. Gruth is going to move. Just say right there. And Gruth has a spear with agility, plus four. Fourteen, four. And Gruth is going to hit 1d6. A three minus one is two. So Guntu is down to three HP. All right, and next is Malexia is going, let's just put Malexia here. We're just gonna have a, just a fun beat, old fashioned beat down here. So Malexia is rolling with agility, plus two, eight plus two, 10, no go. Uh, he's gonna roll with a minus one, minus one, no hit, uh, goon two, is gonna roll with a plus two. Nat 20. God. Ugh. So that's a max hit. Um, does he do a swinging hit that hits everybody? Maybe. Well, that's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say that he hits everybody But you know what? I think that Gruth got a potion right before. Well, no, we'll say Gruth is downed. Everyone else loses one. I got to play this straight fair or else I don't trust myself. Six. Malika's down to four. And 
or yeah, Malexia is down to five. Okay. Thought this was supposed to be a beat down. Okay. Um, so next up, geez, I don't even know where we were. Going to Triunia. Or, oh no, that was supposed to be Gruth who's down. Triunia is going to hit again. And this is going to be a plus two. No, it's plus four actually because it's with the torch. And we're going to hit for three. And so that's a two off. And so that goon is down to one. And Malika, who is about to be sacrificed on an altar, is going to roll um, presence. She's going to try and revive growth. Plus three. <sighs> fumble so she does not revive growth and she loses her turn and drops her weapon okay so we're gonna go back around to Malexia is gonna put an end to all this uh, Malexia is plus two 11 plus two 13 and so he has one HP left Malexia Right before she rolls, all of a sudden, stop. She hears stop. Huh? And says, enough. These are just goons for hire. Run along, says a booming voice. And the smell of flour fills the room. And says, there's only one score that needs to be settled right now. And it's between me and Leonidas. And all of them say, where have you been this whole time, Stilton? And Stilton says, I was running around and having a classic style clink, clink, clink sword fight with Leonidas. But now we've both ran in opposite directions through the back tunnel and we've met in the middle of this room. And so... Clear away, all these people. Save yourselves. There's no reason, Malexia, to kill, especially on your first adventure. You're going to be a great adventurer one day, and you may have to make that choice one day, but that day will not be today. It says, get your brother, Gruth, who we have to roll a 1d6 with presence. Oh, no, toughness. What is Gruth's toughness? Plus one. Uh, well, it's a DR6, so it's a plus one. I have to roll. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. So Triunia says, my brother, I think he's dead. And Malika says, come along. I know a necromancer who may be able to help. So they scoop off the field. Everyone... Scoops away, leaving nobody but our last fighters. And so let's bring up that battle now. Okay, so we have our showdown now between Stilton and Leonidas. Now remember, we are switching to a Dragonbane system here, which is roll under, um, which just means... We're not going to try to get over 12. We're going to try to get under whatever the uh, applicable skill is, which for most um, is going to be whatever their weapon skill is. So uh, it looks like Leonidas, and I know it doesn't say Leonidas here. I randomly generated this character, so just ignore that. Um, but we'll do a movement of 12. And it looks like Leonidas has a dagger and a short bow and has a bows uh, of 14 and has a knives of seven. So no strength requirement, has a strength requirement of seven for the short bow, that's fine. It's a D10 plus D4 but it requires a quiver. Tell me, oh, he's got a quiver. 
All right. Uh, adaptive. When rolling for a skill, you can choose to make the roll using another skill. No, that's fine. Doesn't have a companion. I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, I guess knives is the best one for that. So I guess Stilton's strategy here is going to be to try and engage him close range. But Stilton has a movement of eight and has a nice swing with that axe. That'll be 2d6, and it's going to roll under. Um, it's going to roll under axes, which are 12. All right. Uh, and what are we doing for HP here? 17 and oh, I can't, I don't know. hit points. Hit points are calculated. Uh, I believe it's constitution, but yeah, hit points 15. So that would be, yeah, it's your constitution. So 14, um, Oh, I guess it's already measured out. Yeah. Four, five. Yeah, that makes sense. I never know if you're supposed to check it when they lose one or uncheck it when they lose one. So I just do uncheck it. Uh, and then I guess willpower is 15, but I don't think we're going to use any willpower, but just in case. Okay. So we'll roll for uh, initiative, and this will be Leonidas's roll. It's going to be an 18, and Stilton's going to be a 2. So Stilton is going to take the first chop here, and I think that Stilton is going to say, you can't do this can't bother these people you can't do this to this town for your whims you're dying you have to accept that you don't resurrect old gods just to delay the inevitable and he says what are you to tell me what i can and can't do you've ruined this sacrifice and now I'll make a sacrifice out of you, and I will be the champion. No more running head to head. And without a single hesitation, Stilton is going to and get in right close to uh, attack range here and is going to roll, try to roll under a. Uh, 12 to hit with the axe and let me just kind of clear out i know people hate my dice rolling but go be be merciful on me because i um i have a, a hurt a hurdy wrist 16 not gonna do it all right and so now we're locked up into this sort of combat and so i think right away leonidas is going to try and push to get some distance and let me just check on the rules on that. All right, so I was going to do like a grapple maybe, but really there's no point in this. It would be opposed brawling rolls. Um, he could trap me in the grip, but he can't really do anything. Uh, while maintaining your grip, you're also unable to move or perform any action that requires body movement except break. This counts as an unarmed attack with a boon that cannot be dodged or parried, releasing the enemy is a free action. Oh, I guess, okay, so that would be like a fists uh, attack. Yeah, so unarmed attack would be uh, d6 plus d4 because of his strength. So yeah, I guess we'll do like opposed brawling rolls. That's kind of fun. So we have 12 um, and brawling for... 12. So I guess these are just straight up opposed rolls right here. So we'll roll for Leonidas. 17 fail. And Stilton. A 2. Excellent. So uh, Leonidas attempts to brawl, but be, or to grapple. But because he failed the grapple, he is going to fall, I believe, is what happens. Uh, if your attempt fails, you fall to the ground. If it succeeds, both of you fall. Um, so, yeah, this is a fall. And so 
this would be probably I'm going to have a boon here when uh, I'm attacking this time because if he is just, you know, a prone target, if you are standing up but your enemy is lying on the ground, your attack gets a boon and inflicts an extra D6 advantage. Hot dog. Okay, so this could be quick work here. So Leonidas uh, on the ground, Stilton over, Stilton's rolling the axes, uh, which uh, is 12. So we got to get under 12 here, and I roll with a boon so I can re-roll if I want. Did it, eight, and so we don't even have to do a boon. Although I guess I could check to see if I get a crit. Nope, rolled an eight again. Um, all right, so Stilton is now going to hit with this hand axe, which is 2d6, and um, I guess I'll just use two of these. 2d6, and I get to hit for an extra d6. So nine plus, Five is 14. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. It's good to be the king. All right. So does is there any armor here? Any armor, please? No armor. Can we just do without armor? Leather armor, one. So it would be five plus five, 14. 13. So we'll go minus one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's great. And so I guess he has to now try to get up. Well, that's a that's an action. And so he stands and Stilton is let's see if there's anything I could do to make this a little more interesting here since we're I don't want to get cocky, but um Fists, I guess I could do brawling. Yeah, I guess I'll just do axes. And we'll try to roll under. My friends, somebody just rolled a dragon. <laughs> okay, so let's just clear this here. Oh, man, I'm so sad. I hope that I'm able to... Ex well... I wish I had done it with this dice is all I'm saying because I love seeing the little dragon. All right. So let's just move into the final paces here. And I think I'm approaching two hours. So forgive me if I'm not at my best here. But all right. Um, Leonidas says, no, stop. Wait. Don't do it. I've just, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm afraid of dying. And I say, you know what? I understand. He says, you do? And Stilton says, yeah, I'm afraid of dying too. And Leonidas says, oh, thank God. I thought. Gets to kind of his knees, grabbing Stilton's flannel shirt or whatever, and looking up at him, he says, I just, I thought you would, I thought you wouldn't understand what it's like. It's like, no, no. I understand. The difference, though, is I don't sacrifice innocent people to cling on to life. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go bake a loaf of bread, so I've got a split. Whoosh! An axe to the head. Gah! Leonidas and his reign are over Stilton walks out triumphantly triumphantly and before he reaches the door another cracking cracking sound cracking in the 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 structure more lava stilton's running towards the door and he tries the door and it's locked Hey, banging. Hey, are you still on the other side? Hey, hey. Nothing. And all of a sudden, he hears. <laughs> and he's like, oh, no. What the hell is that? And he says, I am reborn. And rising up from the lava, 
is Malchak, the demon they're trying to summon. And Stilton says, it's impossible. There needed to be a champion and a sacrifice of someone pure of heart. That man was not pure of heart. He says, no, he wasn't. But luckily, we had someone else, someone whose soul I have integrated into mine. Run along, Stilton. Tell them that the demon lord, Gruth Reborn, will stalk them in the night. And Stilton goes running. And that is end of our story for now. Um, we have Groot reborn. His soul was absorbed into a demon. Triunia, nobody was able to save them in time. Malexia and Malika is saved. Malexia is obviously off to a great start. Uh, on the heroic journey to becoming an adventurer. We all remember that flip off the rock here. Stilton made quick work of this biatch, uh, Leonidas, who was split down the middle, just like Conan the Librarian did in, in UHF, if anyone saw, saw that. And unfortunately, though, we have a sacrifice, we have a champion. And so now Stilton may be soul bonded to this demon because he is part of the sacri of the ritual that caused this demon to be reborn. How will it turn out in the sequel? I don't know. It's up to all of you. And I empower any of you out there that are interested in continuing this story. Go ahead and do it. Just make the video. Because if there's anything we've learned through this round robin, it's that just play. Just pick it up and play. Literally 13, 14 different people we've never met. As far as I know, no one has met anyone else. And we were able to put together a whole story. 15 minutes apiece, plus two hours here at the end of mine. Um, and, you know, a total of really... 12 times 15, three, five hours of story. And if I had, if we had given more than 15 minutes, then we could have put together a whole book, a whole novel, a whole movie. And that is the power of just like saying yes to whatever options come up, trying new things. I don't know if I'll be playing Forbidden Psalm again. <laughs> it felt a little bit tedious. and Maybe it's just because I was learning as I was playing. Uh, I wasn't able to narrate as much as I like to during action. Um, I think it would have been fun if it was as a solo game, but I was constantly sort of stressing about the uh, experience of, of people viewing this. And especially those of you who just listen to me. My God, I'm thinking about this video and just hearing like, while you're doing dishes, you hear, okay, and his strength is two, and okay, his strength is three. Um, but the point is not really to be worried about that kind of stuff. Um, and, and once I got past that and was in the flow and started understanding the game, I was just playing. And no offense, but it was like I wasn't thinking about people watching. I was just thinking about these characters. I got like wrapped up in some stuff. I really was surprised at how much I felt certain things. Uh, and this is why we play. This is just, um, I'm just so proud of everyone and so happy with the result and so happy to be part of this community. And, and I hope we can do this again soon. Thank you. But I don't want to have to be the one that gives anyone permission to do this. If you're seeing this video right now, if you watch this whole thing, if you want to do this, start a YouTube channel, record on your phone, record on your dad's VHS camcorder. It doesn't matter. We're having a good time. I had a great time and can't wait to waffle with everyone soon because we have some, we have some updates regarding Simbarum. So, all right, everybody. Thank you. And, uh, please tip your local baker. <laughs>